On the 17th of September 1944, the British Second Army launched Operation Market Garden, a combined ground and airborne offensive into the Netherlands that aimed to secure a bridgehead across the River Rhine at Arnhem. Due to stout German resistance and delays in securing key objectives, Second Army was unable to achieve its main goal, and instead, at the conclusion of Market Garden on the 26th of September, the army found itself spread thin across a narrow corridor that was dangerously exposed on both flanks. To ensure that the Germans didn't take advantage of this weakness and attempt to split the corridor in two, additional Allied units were brought forward to reinforce Second Army. Among them was the American 7th Armored Division, which was redeployed from the area of Metz in northeastern France, to take over responsibility for a portion of Second Army's front line near the town of Boxmere. Arriving in this area in late September, the 7th Armored had no time to settle in and become familiar with its new surroundings. For on the 30th of September, the division was ordered to strike south towards Venlo and clear a pocket of German troops that were holding out on the western bank of the River Mars. Although intelligence has stated that the Germans were holding this pocket with light forces, the American troops quickly found that this wasn't the case, and by the 6th of October, the division had advanced only 3 kilometers and sustained 452 casualties. As a result, with little progress being made, the 7th Armoured was ordered to stop its attack, hand over its positions to the British 11th Armoured Division, and redeploy to a new sector of the front line covering the city of Eindhoven. Stretching for over 50 kilometres from Derna in the north to Ophoven in the south, this new sector was considered to be a quiet one with very little enemy activity. That said, it was far too long for a single division to effectively control, and despite being reinforced by the 1st Belgian Brigade, the 7th Armoured lacked sufficient numbers of troops to cover every inch of ground. As such, Major General Lindsay Sylvester, the divisional commander, was forced to make do with what troops he had available, choosing to deploy his units to the major points along the line, between which vigorous patrolling would be carried out to prevent any enemy infiltration. In the centre of his front, General Sylvester employed the 87th Cavalry Reconnaissance Squadron, which was tasked with guarding the towns of Liesel, Mayul and Adervirt. For three weeks, the squadron carried out its duties in this area largely without incident, until suddenly, on the 26th of October 1944, numerous reports by Dutch civilians began to flood in regarding the build-up of a large German force to the east of Mayul. Then, at 0600 on the 27th of October, the men of the 87th Squadron were subjected to an intense, hour-long artillery bombardment, which marked the start of a German counter-offensive in the region. The after-action report for the 7th Armoured Division details that, from 0600 to 0710, a heavy artillery barrage preceded a coordinated attack across the Derna Canal and Canal de Nord. The initial German thrust was toward Mayul, held by Troop C of the 87th Cavalry Reconnaissance Squadron. The enemy was supported by tanks and ample artillery. At first, the strength of the enemy was undetermined, but as information was collected, the seriousness of the counterattack became clear. Involving the combined strength of the 9th Panzer and 15th Panzer Grenadier Divisions, this German offensive struck three points of the section of line occupied by the 87th Squadron. In the centre at Mayul, the Germans quickly overwhelmed the 43-man American garrison, and by 0830 they were in possession of the town. Further to the south, near Nadevit, another German force, disguised in British and American uniforms, succeeded in establishing a bridgehead across the Canal de Nord in the vicinity of Ospel, Whilst in the north, the Germans gained control over the village of Haytrack, following almost 10 hours of heavy fighting. As soon as the first reports of the German assault started to come in, the headquarters of the 7th Armoured immediately rushed additional units forward to try and contain the enemy advance, and by the end of the 27th of October 1944, the division's Combat Command B was holding the area just south of Liesel, Combat Command R was astride the road running between Aston and Mayul, and Combat Command A was shoring up its left flank around Nadevit. At the same time, the 87th Squadron was split up and came under the control of Combat Commands A and R. This realignment of his troops enabled Major General Lindsay Sylvester to begin preparing for an immediate counter-attack to retake the lost ground, 
and early the next morning, on the 28th of October, he directed his combat commands B and R to attack south in the direction of Mayul and Haytrak. The divisional after-action report sums up the result of these attacks. At 0700, Combat Command B began its attack astride the Liesel Mail Road, met heavy opposition and made little progress. At the same time, Combat Command R attacked down the Aston Mail Road, meeting stiff opposition. Little progress was made that day, and defensive positions were taken during the night. The failure of the 28th October counterattacks made it clear that unless the 7th Armoured was substantially reinforced, it would be unable to deal with the German offensive on its own. Accordingly, starting from midday on the 28th, General Miles Dempsey, the commander of 2nd Army, began a large-scale redeployment of units to reinforce the position of the 7th Armoured. At the heart of these reinforcements was the 15th Scottish Division, commanded by Major General Colin Barber, which was ordered to move with all possible speed from its present location at Tilburg and concentrate in the vicinity of Aston. At the same time, the 4th Armoured and 6th Guards tank brigades were instructed to close in on Viet and Geldrop respectively, whilst the 3rd British and 11th Armoured Divisions provided artillery and administrative support to their American counterparts. In addition, the 51st Highland and 53rd Welsh Divisions were put on notice to move to the Helmand area on the completion of their current operations. Moving through the afternoon and evening on the 28th of October, the lead elements of the 15th Scottish Division arrived in the Aston area in the morning of the 29th of October. Unfortunately, the 15th was still in the process of forming up when the Germans resumed their northward advance in Helmand, and by the afternoon of the 29th, Combat Command B had been driven out of Liesel, and Combat Command R had been pushed to the southern outskirts of Aston. Detailing the experiences of Combat Command R, a 7th Farmer report states that, at dawn, large enemy forces of tanks and supporting infantry attacked the left flank of the main forces astride the road to Aston. The tanks completely overran the positions and the defence line was shattered. A tank destroyer fired at the approaching German tanks but was unable to stop their advance. One German tank commander put his gun in the window of the house where a company command post was located and forced the surrender of all but two men who ran down a ditch outside the house. Our heavy artillery, augmented by two more British artillery regiments, slowed the German advance and gave our troops time to reorganise after the breakthrough. With the American front on the verge of collapsing, General Dempsey made the decision to withdraw and concentrate the 7th Farmoured around the town of Nadevit. Simultaneously, he directed the 15th Scottish Division with the 6th Guards Tank Brigade on the command to move up, establish a new defensive line in front of Aston and Derna, and cover the withdrawal of the Americans. By midnight on the 29th, the 7th Farmoured had successfully disengaged, and the 15th Division assumed responsibility for the Aston Derna sector. Early the next morning, on the 30th of October, Major General Colin Barber directed his division to begin advancing south, with a view of driving the enemy from the Mayall area. On the division's left flank, the 46th Brigade attacked down the road leading out from Derna, and by nightfall it had cleared the woods on the western side of the road, and was consolidating its positions on the northern edge of Liesel. Meanwhile, in the centre, the 44th Brigade initially experienced difficulties, as the Germans launched a mid-morning attack into the woods southeast of Aston. For most of the day, heavy fighting developed in this area, and it was only through the intervention of the divisional artillery and Churchill tanks of the 6th Guards Tank Brigade that the enemy was driven off and forced back to the area of Sloot. By evening, the 44th Brigade's front had stabilised, and a battalion of infantry had been pushed forward into the western suburbs of Liesel. For the 227th Brigade, on the division's right flank, the 30th was spent largely on the defensive, as the brigade held its ground against multiple attempts by the enemy to secure Aston. The next day, on the 31st of October, the 46th resumed its southward advance, and at 0830 it conducted a two-battalion attack that recaptured Liesel by 1530. Shortly afterwards, the brigade passed through its 3rd Battalion, the 6th King's Own Scottish Borderers, to secure the nearby hamlet of Sloot. During this attack, the borderers were momentarily held up by a well-entrenched enemy reinforced by two Panzer IV tanks, one of which would single-handedly be taken out by Lieutenant John Woods, who was later awarded the Military Cross in recognition of his actions. His medal citation states that, during a battalion attack on Sloot, Lieutenant Woods was commanding one of the forward platoons of his company. Lieutenant Woods' platoon was eventually pinned down by fire from an enemy Mark IV tank concealed among some buildings. 
Several casualties were sustained in the platoon, and Lieutenant Woods was wounded in the arm. In spite of his wound, Lieutenant Woods took a piat and crawled forward through the enemy fire until he reached the tank, which he proceeded to engage at point blank range. The first round put the tank completely out of action and killed the crew. Lieutenant Woods then returned to his platoon. As a result of this gallant action, the platoon was able to capture its objective without further casualties. By 1700, on the 31st of October, the Suit for King's own Scottish borderers had secured Sloot and were digging in on the southern outskirts. Elsewhere, the 44th and 227th Brigades had made local attacks over the course of the day to conform with the advance by the 46th Brigade. The recapture of Sloot by the 15th Scottish Division effectively marked the end of the German counter-offensive, which had lost its momentum and was now being pushed back with heavy casualties. Realising this, the German High Command, which at the time was preparing to commit the 116th Panzer Division into the battle, revised their plans and instead ordered the 9th Panzer and 15th Panzer Grenadier Divisions to withdraw from the Mayor area starting on the 31st of October, with their place in the bridgehead being taken over by a battle group of German paratroopers. In the meantime, the British were continuing to build up their strength in the region, and by the 1st of November 1944, the 53rd Welsh Division had arrived at Viet and was in position along the canal line on the right flank of the 7th Armoured. The next day, the 2nd of November, the pressure against the enemy bridgehead was renewed, and in the north, the 15th Division swept south, liberating Haytrack and Nierkant against minimal opposition. Simultaneously, in the west, the 7th Armoured re-entered the battle and succeeded in driving the enemy to the area of Nederwerterdyke by the 4th of November. On the 5th of November, the 15th Scottish put in an attack aimed at retaking Mayol, but strong German resistance, combined with a low-lying boggy terrain, made progress difficult and at midday an order was issued halting the advance. With the end of the German counter-offensive, the headquarters of the British 2nd Army initiated preparations to conduct its own large-scale offensive, aimed at not only liberating Mayol for a second time, but also clearing the German-occupied territory as far east as Venlo. For this, additional units were moved to the Helmand region, and by mid-November, the British 7th Armoured, 49th West Riding and 51st Highland Divisions had entered the front line ready to participate in the forthcoming offensive. The arrival of these troops enabled the American 7th Armoured Division to be pulled out of the line for some rest and recuperation, and on the 8th of November 1944, the division left 2nd Army and passed under the command of the American 9th Army. Before they left his command, General Miles Dempsey issued a message of appreciation to the men of the 7th Armoured. Before you leave 2nd Army, I want to thank you and your division for the work you have done for us. In particular, I congratulate you all on the splendid way in which you held off the strong enemy attack which came against you at Mayall. You were heavily outnumbered, but by holding firm as you did, you gave me ample time to bring up the necessary reserves. I appreciate the high fighting qualities which your division showed. Thank you for watching this video, if you enjoyed it please be sure to leave a like and subscribe so that you never miss one of my future videos.